Since the 2015 draft, there have been eight top five picks who can officially be labeled disappointing massive busts. And all eight of these players saw a rise all the way to the top only to then take a dramatic fall end. With our first player, James Wiseman, we have a rare draft pick that may have taken down an entire dynasty. When the Golden State Warriors made James Wiseman the second pick ahead of LaMelo Ball in the 2020 draft, they were already taking a tremendous risk as Wiseman had barely played at all in college. At Memphis, his numbers of 19.7 points, 10.7 rebounds, and three blocks per game looked promising, yes, but he only played in three games and then was deemed ineligible by the NCAA due to taking $11,500 from his own coach, Penny Hardaway. Penny claimed he was a Memphis alumni and so he could donate to the James Wiseman Fund, and the NCAA did tell Wiseman he could play at Memphis again after a 12-game suspension if he just donated $11,500 to charity. Instead, James James would declare for the draft a financially great choice as he was nowhere near the prospect he was hyped up to be. A 7 foot 1 athletic marvel, ESPN compared Wiseman early on to a Joel Embiid who could also run the floor like Wilt Chamberlain. The 18 year old Tennessee native is a physical specimen with some similar measurables to Joel Embiid at the same age. But the 7-1 Wiseman is in a similar class as one of basketball's most impressive physical marvels. And the fans agree. He is David Robinson reincarnated. He is another Wilt Chamberlain. What's scary is the Warriors actually have a chance of landing him. This would certainly prove to be scary, as despite the fact that Golden State with Steph Curry, Clay, and Draymond could have always used an athletic rim-running center throughout their dynasty years, making James Wiseman a seemingly perfect fit, Currently, in 2024, James Wiseman is not getting any playing time on the Detroit Pistons, the worst team in basketball, while the Golden State Warriors are out of the playoffs with a losing record. And while at first glance, James Wiseman's stats do not look too bad, 11.5 points and 5.8 rebounds on 52% shooting as a rookie, it is not hard to find the problem here. Zero improvement with a lot of injuries mixed in. Headed into the NBA, the one thing scouts called into question with James Wiseman was his basketball IQ. Lastly, he's not quite the forceful defensive anchor that he could be, as you can see here with Evan Mobley putting him on a poster. Then again here in the same game, put on another poster by a small guard. I told you, you can catch that ball right there and play. I didn't see it. But you didn't see it. That's my point. On offense, his hands and physicality were also questioned, but on defense, his lack of awareness was very apparent. Overall for his career, James Wiseman's per 36 minute stats show us averages of 1.4 blocks and 4.8 fouls per game. His advanced stats show us that he has never come close to having a positive box score plus minus. For his career, for every 100 possessions he has played, his teams have been outscored by over four points. LaMelo Ball as a rookie had a positive box score plus minus of 1.8. Golden State did try to develop Wiseman. They sent him to the G League multiple times. You in the G League, bro? And James seemingly took this very well. They got you in the G League. However, he also had a massive knee injury that took away his second season, which we cannot deny as a big man could be very detrimental. It is always possible to fight back if you have that fire in you. Golden State, did not believe he had. After playing in just 60 games with the Warriors in three seasons, Golden State traded James Wiseman to the Detroit Pistons where on a historically bad team, James has still struggled to get playing time only averaging 13.9 minutes per game as LaMelo Ball was named an all-star in year two and recently received a max contract from the Hornets. It's hard to believe LaMelo Ball would not have given the Warriors a much larger chance to keep their dynasty alive, either through his on-court play or if they used him as a trade asset. The Warriors have have won several titles though, so it's hard to feel too bad for them. But guys, before we continue, I am very excited to thank our friends at DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. Because as we know, the NFL playoffs are here and I've teamed up with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official partner of the NFL, to hook you guys up for Super Bowl 58. All new customers who bet $5 will get $200 in bonus bets instantly, instantly. And if you're wondering what you could use your $200 in bonus bets on, you could combine multiple bets together from Super Bowl 58 for a shot at an even bigger payout. If you're already signed up for DraftKings like me, you can make a bet on Super Bowl 58 and get a bonus bet back. Get a bonus bet in the amount of your initial wager. Max reward limits apply. And if sports betting is not yet available in your state, do not worry. You can still join in in all the fun with DraftKings Daily Fantasy. So make sure to go download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers, again, bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That is personally what I was 
website, just an incredible deal. That's promo code Corzemba, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. Again, thank you to DraftKings for sponsoring today's video. And for now, let's get back into the video. Coincidentally, the next man on our list was just James Wiseman's teammate. As with Marvin Bagley III, we have one of the most confusing busts we have ever seen. In the 2018 draft, the Kings took Bagley directly before Luka Doncic. As it currently stands, Luka would already be the best player in Sacramento Kings history, while Marvin is on the Washington Wizards, his third team. So how could Sacramento possibly justify drafting Marvin? Well, in high school, there were whispers that Marvin Bagley was a generational prospect. When he was a junior, he was the number one recruit in the nation, and then he reclassified a year up and was still named the number one senior in the nation, and the production would not stop there. In Duke, in a single season, Bagley was named a first-team All-American. If you do want Marv's entire high school and college backstory, I've made a video specifically on him alone, so we're going to focus here on what went wrong in the NBA after he was an All-American, after he was the second pick in the draft. That is where we can point to a combination of ego, work ethic, and the wrong people around him. I'm not talking about the Sacramento Kings. Plot twist by his father, who started some drama on Twitter this weekend. Bagley's father tweeting and then later deleting a trade request. <laughs> Darren Fox's dad, Aaron Fox, tweeted, trade him. Darren, well, here's Rich's reaction. <laughs> Jesus Christ. An extremely strange move that made headlines everywhere, but it was Marvin who needed to work on his game. Yes, as a rookie, Bagley was an animal at the rim. He shot nearly 70% on 256 shots. The problem was he would take 355 for two-point attempts from three feet or further. And on these attempts, he shot 42%, which is, of course, for two-point attempts, awful. As he refused to play near the basket and instead floated away from the rim to take jumpers, the Kings would get so fed up with Bagley's play that they would begin the 2022 season telling him he was no longer part of their opening day rotation, even though he was only 22. Sacramento didn't care. Instead, they traded him to the Pistons, where it was the same story. Bagley's 2023 shot log shows a man who does not care care at all what his team thinks. Marvin shot 76.5% at the rim on 119 shots and 28.8% from three on 66 shots. Meanwhile, the very season after they traded Marvin Bagley, the Sacramento Kings made the playoffs for the first time in 16 seasons, a playoff drought that was the longest in NBA history. Just like with James Wiseman, Marvin Bagley was given a chance at a complete redo with a Pistons team that was historically bad this season, and even Detroit did not want him, sending him to the Washington Wizards, where immediately Bagley began to put up numbers just like always. However, his reputation is one of a player that gets completely lost on the defensive end and someone who gets locked in at some moments, but for entire games can seemingly not care. Not caring is what many thought about number one pick in the 2017 draft, Markel Fultz, who may be the most mysterious number one pick in NBA history. As here's a side-by-side -side comparison of Markel Fultz shooting at Washington compared to him in Philly. Have you seen that butt ugly jump shot? As you can see, after the 76ers drafted Markel Fultz with the number one pick, a clear hitch developed into Fultz's shot that suddenly made him terrible at shooting a basketball. In college, Fultz was seen as a one-man show. Despite the fact that he was the point guard and Washington went 9-22 and with him running the show, Markel's stat line of 23.2 points, 5.9 assists, and 5.7 rebounds per game were enough for him to become the consensus number one pick over future All-Star Jason Tatum and De'Aaron Fox. Philadelphia could have had a dynasty with Jason Tatum, Jimmy Butler, and Joel Embiid leading the way. Instead, they went with Ben Simmons and Markel. With both players, we saw extreme drop-offs. As Markel went from a 41% three-point shooter on over two made threes a game in college to a rookie who just took one three all season. Bellinelli gives it up. Faults! missing it, which he missed. And to this day, Markel's shot has never recovered. In the entirety of his NBA career, for a single season, Markel has never made over a half A3 a game, and he's never shot over 31% from deep. If you cannot shoot, it is very hard to become a star in the current NBA, so what happened to Markel Fultz's jump shot? At the time, there were several rumors, one involving a potential motorbike accident where it was claimed Markel took a very bad fall and hurt his arm. If this was true, the Sixers would have actually been able 
able to void his contract or at least attempt to do so as you cannot participate in dangerous activities like that as an activity like motorbiking puts your body at risk when you are a professional athlete being paid millions of dollars markel has fully denied the story though with good reason watching markel it did not look like he had a true injury it looked more as if he had developed the yips a famous sports brain malfunction where you get so nervous performing a normal task that you overthink it and mess it up even worse the most the famous example of this is Yankee second baseman Chuck Knobloch, who was a four-time all-star and gold glove second baseman before he got into his head and suddenly could not make the simple throw to first base, resulting in 26 errors in a single season and one of the best fielders in baseball changing his position as a 31-year-old before shortly retiring. After two years in Philly, the Sixers gave up on Markel. They thought he had the same type of situation, and they moved him to the Orlando Magic where it was eventually revealed that Markel had a very, very rare nerve injury he was diagnosed with oh god help me out guys thoracic outlet syndrome that's you know just rolls off the tongue that is a condition in his shoulder that limits the range of motion an injury that caused extreme pain in his shoulders and neck and numbness in his fingers Fultz would later say that during those philadelphia 76ers years when he tried to shoot the basketball it felt like he was wearing too small of a suit he also said he lost feeling in his shooting hand but tried his best to shoot through it growing up in the area i grew up you have bumps and bruises but that's where it becomes a business taking care of your body. This same injury is known to have plagued two other NBA players in Baino Udrich and Landry Fields, giving us a bizarre but very real answer as to why Markel Fultz lost his jump shot. An unfortunate situation for such a promising young talent, but if we want to up the ante on an unfortunate, the number four man on our list currently has headlines around him that read like a nightmare. At one point in time, Josh Jackson was a humble 16-year-old kid who told the world he wanted to be a role model. Do you feel like you're a role model at this age? Yes, I do. I, I feel like kids, a lot of kids look up to me and it just makes me feel good. This was after the ultra athletic Jackson had led his high school to their first state title ever, where he averaged 28 points and 15 rebounds per game as a sophomore. By the time he was a senior, Jackson was ranked as the highest rated recruit in 247 sports history with a 102. Recent prospects such as Zion Williamson topped out at a 99, which meant according to one of the biggest recruiting websites in the world, Josh Jackson was one of the best prospects we have ever seen. And then after winning Big 12 Freshman of the Year on a 35 win Kansas team that made the Elite Eight, it was no surprise that the Josh Jackson hype continued. The Suns made him the fourth pick in the 2017 draft, directly behind future all-star De'Aaron Fox. Sports Illustrated would give this draft pick an A for the Suns, saying, the thought of Jackson and Devin Booker running on the wings is tantalizing. This report, though, would have several red flags, with phrases such as, can really defend when he wants to, his emotions can get the best of him, and an off-court incident was mentioned, which we will get to. Also, his entire weakness section was his jump shot, which he never fixed. In Phoenix, though, Jackson's on-court stats do not look like someone you would want to give up on. Sure, in his second season, he shot just 41% from the floor on 11 points per game, a mid-tier stat line, but he was still a high flyer, and in his first season, he had actually been named second-team all-rookie with similar stats. Phoenix didn't care. They traded him after three key incidents. The second came when Josh Jackson was arrested at the music festival Rolling Loud. Josh Jackson was was arrested because he tried to get into the VIP area several times without having proper VIP access. They said no. He came back. They said no. Tried to get in the VIP section. They said no. Finally, a gentleman who was working at the VIP section happened to be an off-duty police officer working a non-regular duty job. He was like, sir, I'm going to now escort you away from the VIP section. <laughs> and then eventually put him in handcuffs and told him to sit in a golf cart. Ran away from the golf cart in the handcuffs. Was later detained by police officers. And then he eventually left on just a $1,000 bond. This ended up being a small thing. What was big was that this incident revealed Josh Jackson was currently in family court to address paternity issues issues and running away from police was being used as grounds that he was an unfit father. Yes, Jackson's third major incident at this time was that the mother of Josh's daughter, 41-year-old Lorena Vallea, accused of getting his four-month-old daughter high on marijuana. The court doc says, quote, after the child did not move for a long period of time, mother forced the child to wake up. The child appeared to be high and could only lift her eyelids to a midway point. Claiming Josh got their baby high among 
among other things such as not paying paternity. The Suns did not want this drama in their organization, as Strike 3 came when Josh's first offense came back to life. Then flashing back to two years ago, the athlete got in some legal trouble in 2017 after he and a teammate were charged with vandalism. The two were accused of damaging his teammate's ex-girlfriend's car. Allegedly vandalized a woman's car outside a Lawrence bar and threatened to beat her. Yikes. After the Suns gave up on Jackson, the Grizzlies had him split time between the NBA and G League, and in Memphis, things seemed promising. They got you in the G League. Josh would say, don't feel bad for me. It's an opportunity. I am just thankful I get to play basketball. That sounds like the role model we once knew. Unfortunately, Jackson's story ends horribly. After his failed NBA career in 2023, he was accused of SA, the R word. I'm only using those words because of YouTube. Personally, I believe if you commit an action this harsh, well, let's just emphasize it. Disgusting. And I am all for letting the justice system have its day. Let's let it play out in court. Only here's the story and you can tell me if you think there are holes in it. Reportedly, Josh was with a woman at night. He went back to his place. He offered her $1,500 to come back with her. She says she declined that. She says she went over to Josh's place to do nothing. She says there, she was R word. She says the day after, a man threatened her over text because he thought she stole Josh's watch. Okay. Later, two women who her lawyer identified as sisters broke into her apartment and entered her bedroom. One appeared to be holding a gun and they threatened her with murder, according to her attorney. After shouting for help, the doorman tackled the sisters and New York police officers arrived to arrest them. The women arrested claimed that Josh Josh Jackson orchestrated the incident. Again, we will see what the legal system has to say about this one. Doesn't look great. Moving on to the most heartwarming story of these bunch. Chris Sun always knew the odds were stacked against him. At the age of nine, his mother faced legal issues and fearing he would be put in an orphanage. Chris and his brother chose to live on the streets of Alexandria, Virginia, and they would do what they could to earn money. That meant hustling grown men in basketball, and that is where Chris Dunn learned his game. To me, Chris Dunn represents everything about what hard work can get you, and he also shows us how money can change us in unexpected ways. After a high school career that saw him rise to a five-star prospect, at Providence, Dunn became a star. The extremely rare two-way guard who went on to win both Big East Player of the Year and Big East Defensive Player of the Year in back-to-back -back seasons. The Minnesota Timberwolves have never won a title, so they believed Dunn was the missing championship DNA they needed. Only the six-foot-four guard with a six-foot-ten wingspan was traded after just one season with the team. As his 3.8 points per game were not enough to get him on the court for Tom Thibodeau, a head coach notoriously tough on rookies. Already, after year one, Dunn was considered a throw-in piece in the Jimmy Butler trade, as Minnesota gave up future all-stars Zach Levine and Lowry Markkinen, along with Chris Dunn for Jimmy Butler and Jacob Patton. With the Bulls, Dunn was given a great opportunity, as in years two and three, he did start a combined 77 games. However, Chicago won just 27 and 22 games in those years. If he had taken enough shots to qualify for the leaderboard in 2018, Dunn would have ranked 127th out of 130 players in the entire NBA in effective field goal percentage. The next season, in his third year, he would have ranked 119th out of 121st. Add in some key injuries. Dunn's got a freebie, and he got a five-point game. Clay didn't see him. He got taken from the side, but no one. Dunn did this all oh, himself. No. Oh my goodness. Oh no. And it looks like Dunn was out of his way for good, only that is not his character. That is not who he is. I mentioned money before because often, basketball players growing up in extremely tough situations, such as Chris Dunn, have one goal in mind, to get their family or to get themselves out of that situation forever. That means when that first contract comes, it's hard to keep that same level of motivation. That may have been the case for Chris Dunn. He did not develop a jump shot in his first few seasons in the league. However, he never stopped fighting. Now Chris Dunn has emerged as a solid role player for the Utah Jazz in the 2023 and 2024 seasons, as he is now shooting over 40% from three. So yes, he is not living up to the standard of a top five pick. Yes, I would still technically classify him a bust because of that. However, if Chris Dunn was the 25th pick, well, he has become a journeyman vet who is more than respectable and shows his determination in every single game he plays. I think out of every player on this list, Chris Dunn has the chance to play to the oldest age in the NBA. I specify NBA because during the 2016 season in the Euro League, 
Drajan Bender averaged 2.14 points per game on 33% shooting, and so the Phoenix Suns made him the fourth pick of the 2016 draft. Phoenix would actually swing and miss twice this day, as they also took power forward Marquise Chris, that is, two big men, while Demonis Sabonis was still waiting to be taken, Sabonis was drafted 11th. So why was Phoenix so confident to bet on a two-point-per-game score? In comparison, in the EuroLeague, Luka Doncic averaged 16 points per game before he came over here, and he was also EuroLeague MVP. The answer to why the Suns took Bender is three-point madness had hit the league. Not only were the Warriors the champions, but also Kristaps Porzingis went from being booed instantly when the Knicks took him during the 2015 draft. What a f is Tengis Pengis? I never heard of to a man who was seen as one of the best young prospects in the league, which meant Phoenix saw Drajan Bender as their own desert Dirk Nowitzki only. Of course, he was not close to that. It has been said that Bender was just not ready to be playing in the NBA. As fans would say, Bender looked scared on the court with the new pressure put on him. In year one, Drajan Bender averaged 3.4 points per game. In year three, he had only upped that number to five points per game with four rebounds and 1.2 assists. The man was not filling up the stat sheet and his job when he was drafted was to be a shooter, a three-point assassin. In his last year in Phoenix, he shot under 22% from three, and so the Suns declined his player option and just let him walk away. At this point in time, Bender has emerged as a very solid player overseas. He is now averaging over 17 points per game, and he has his sights set on returning to the league, so maybe we will see an NBA team benefit from the play of Drajan Bender in the future. For the Phoenix Suns, though, three seasons played, zero contributions, one of the biggest busts we've ever seen. It's also been said this bust was so bad that Phoenix was afraid to take another international prospect in Luka Doncic and instead took DeAndre Aiden with the first pick in the 2018 draft. That is of course speculation. What is not speculation is what Jaleel Okafor did here. We got money, you <laughs> Yes, you just watched Jaleel Okafor, the number three pick of the 2015 draft by the Philadelphia 76ers, street fighting during his rookie season. Jaleel Okafor will now be accompanied by a security guard whenever he goes out of town in any city. That's according to league sources. We've seen a few players end up as the number one recruit on every major recruiting site. Jaleel Okafor fit that mold. What we have never seen is a freshman get picked by the mainstream media as college basketball's preseason player of the year. That is how great Jaleel Okafor was considered to be when he joined the Duke Blue Devils for his freshman season. And just like with Marvin Bagley, Okafor produced. Even more so, he led Duke to the national championship, as along the way he was named a first-team All-American and proved to be an unstoppable force in the low post, averaging 17.3 points per game. He also averaged 8.5 rebounds, but most importantly, he shot 66% as the number one player on everyone else's scouting report, as the star of Duke, as the man who was facing doubles. Jaleel seemingly scored at will, although the problems with his game were already popping up. Questions came about his defensive footwork, rim protection, and a lack of a jump shot in the modern NBA, all of which are extremely fair. Okafor had a great answer, though, when he was asked about these things. This was about defense specifically. Honestly, that is one of my flaws that I can improve on, but I can also improve on the offensive end. Luckily, I'm 19 years old, and I think I have a lot of time to improve my game. I think a lot of people forget that a lot of us are still 18 or 19 years old. We're put under the microscope and expected to be perfect on the floor and sometimes even off the floor. Oftentimes, I do think people forget how young we actually are. We would never forget how young Okafor was due to his pattern of decisions. On the court in Philly, Jaleel put up what you could only describe as a very promising rookie season. The Sixers didn't win, but Jaleel averaged 17.5 points, 7 rebounds, and 1.2 blocks per game, and he shot over 50% from the field. He was a rookie. Things looked very promising, but off the court, Jaleel did everything wrong. First came a bar fight in October where a uh, YouTube censored word was pulled. Then Jaleel was pulled over by a police officer after he was going 108 miles per hour. Those two things happened before he was caught on camera fighting in the street. All of these things understandably led to a firestorm of controversy and Jaleel told the media this was not the person he wanted to be. This was not the person who he was. Unfortunately, the damage had been done in Philly it seems, but as a basketball player, if your talent is undeniable, you 
will of course be put on the court. The exact same things happened to Charles Barkley when he was on the exact same team, the Philadelphia 76ers. Eventually, Charles Barkley became one of the greatest power forwards we have ever seen. Okafor's talent at the NBA level was not there because all of the questions that scouts had about him, all of the weaknesses in his game coming into the NBA were all very true and they were never addressed, aka he must have never worked on them. People love to say a guy like Jaleel Okafor would have thrived in the 1980s or 1990s. To me, that's just an excuse for saying he did not want to put in the work to develop a jump shot. In the 2008 draft, Brook Lopez was taken by the New Jersey Nets, where he became an all-star due to his inside play. In his first eight seasons in the NBA, Brook Lopez would attempt a total of 31 three-pointers and make only three, a percentage of gross. In his ninth season in the NBA, Brook Lopez averaged 5.2 three-point attempts a game and made 1.8 of them. At the age of 28, completely changing his offensive game, and it paid off as well as it possibly could have. In the 2021 season, Brook Lopez was the starting center for the champion Milwaukee Bucks. He's also shed the reputation of bad defender and gone on to become a two-time member of the all-defensive team. As it currently stands in the 2024 season, he is averaging 2.8 blocks per game. Jaleel never expanded his game, he never added a jump shot, and he would end up playing on four teams in just six seasons before gaining zero NBA interest at just the age of 25. Currently, Jaleel is playing overseas, where in the Spanish ACB, he is averaging 11.7 points and 5.1 rebounds per game. And get this, the man is starting to make threes. Yes, he is only averaging 1.27 attempts per game, but he is making 43% of those shots. If Jaleel's jumper continues to develop, I would love to see a Brooke Lopez-like redemption story for Jaleel. Our final player on this list learned nothing from his time in the NBA, as Mario Hazonia may have been the cockiest draft prospect we have ever seen. That was an actual headline headed into the 2015 draft. Mario Hazonia is the cockiest draft prospect in years, which is exactly what makes him such a tantalizing NBA draft prospect. It's also what might cause his downfall. The second part was correct. This was a bold headline. However, if you ask Mario Hazonia about his own future back in 2015. He would compare himself to a young Michael Jordan, only taller. The six foot eight athletic and deep shooting wing would dunk on people and tell them, say my name. He drained threes and showboat on the court, laughing in people's faces. Before the draft, he said, respect? No. I never had respect to anybody on a basketball court. I heard about, if they smell blood, you get eaten. I'm not like that. I don't care. Whether it's a veteran or a young player standing in front of me, I always have the same goal. I want to run over everybody. Hazonia drives it, Milton and finishes! And then stares and walks over into the Kupo. This type of mindset can be a great one. We have seen Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant use this mindset to become two of the greatest players of all time, with Mike, of course, being the GOAT. Hazonia would also tell Bleacher Report, though, that if he was in college, he would be the number one pick, and his confidence was apparently unshakable, as his international coach would say Mario is the only kid in the draft who actually believes he can beat Kobe Bryant one-on-one. -on -one. Again, normally extreme confidence leads you to good things. It did not here. Mario Hazonia, as a rookie, would average 6.1 points per game, along with 1.4 assists, 1.2 turnovers, and 1. 1.6 fouls. Mario would actually average more fouls per game than assists for his entire NBA career, as also for his career, he never averaged more than 1.5 assists per game, despite the fact that in 2018, he did play 22.1 minutes per game. Hazonia took the Kobe Bryant mentality to an extreme. I would say this was more of a Jimmer Fredette mentality. He was going to shoot no matter who liked it. In Mario's second season for a 29-win Orlando Magic team, Super Mario, as he was called, scored just 4.9 points per game on 35.5% shooting with a true shooting percentage of 45% and a PER of 7.2. His VORP, or value over replacement player, of 0.7 ranked him 477th out of 486 eligible players, making him one of the worst players in the NBA by any definition. Mario Hazonia is what happens when you have the confidence of a Kobe Bryant without the skill set to meet it, along with the arrogance to never change. Pride comes before the fall. And after five seasons in the NBA where he played on three different teams, Hazonia did return overseas where when asked if he would ever like to return to the NBA, Hazonia replied with, no, there was a lot I didn't like there. I'm not going to return to the NBA. I didn't get the respect I deserved. Also, in my opinion, the NBA is more a show than the game itself. This was said by a man who is of course a one man show in himself. Kobe Bryant never hid from any challenge ever. Yes, Kobe believed in himself, of course, but he also had a 
level of humbleness to know he did not have all the answers. He learned from the game's greats in order to become one of the game's greats. Mario Hazonia now watches the game's greats from his own TV. So there we have it. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you are still here, you are the realest one. Thank you so much. If you did enjoy this video, it would be awesome if you could subscribe and turn on post notifications. That way we could keep pushing for our goal of 2 million subscribers. If you're already subscribed, thank you so much for supporting. You're awesome. We all know it. And as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. If you're still here while the music is cued, here are two videos I think you are definitely going to enjoy. I mean, personally, I think the one on the left might be more your style, but the one on the right looks pretty awesome too. Click one, let me know what you think. And again, have an awesome day.